Hello there. Welcome to part seven of obtaining your ham license. Uh, today we got a little something different. I'm going to start the, the video out with. Uh, what you're looking at here is a set of uh, jingle bells on an American flag that's very, very old and dark uh, and dingy, and it's uh, they're hooked to a stick. And this stick has uh, wooden uh, or has a uh, hot iron brands in it uh, up one side and then when you turn it around the other way it's got hot iron uh, brands all the way down the other and what you're looking at is called a Fuji stick uh, in 1978 uh, I was living in Japan and I climbed Mount Fuji uh, the Japanese call it Fujiyama and uh, I went up Mount Fuji, it's 12,395 feet. It took me eight hours to get to the top and 45 minutes to come back down. <laughs> I was with two other guys. Oh, it was a climb and a half. I mean, there's like no oxygen up there. And the three of us who went up that mountain. Actually, it's not a mountain. It's, a, it's an extinct volcano. But it's way up there. If you ever get a chance, uh, uh, look on the internet, uh, Mount Fuji. You're only allowed to climb at certain times of the year. It is snow-capped in the winter. What a view from the top. I was, in the morning, when we woke up, uh, we spent the night there, uh, uh, we looked down upon the clouds, uh, the tops of the clouds. It was really neat. And then the clouds cleared away. We were able to look for miles and miles. Mount Fuji, Fujiyama, this is a Fuji stick. You buy them at the bottom, and as you go up the mountain, they have these stops along the way, and you pay a guy a little bit of money, and he takes his hot iron, and he burns uh, where you're at on the mountain into your stick. So we went up one side and paid every time we, we hit a stop. Uh, we'd give this guy some money. He'd burn it in, burn it in, burn it in, all the way up to the top. And when we hit the summit, uh, they burn in uh, sunrise. It says Sunrise, uh, Mount Fuji, 1978 on because we were there when the sun came up the next morning. And then when we went back down, of course it was a lot easier you know, going down and going up that thing, uh, we had brands put in the opposite side of the stick all the way down to the bottom. So it's kind of a little keepsake uh, I keep around. I don't know whatever's going to happen to it. Hopefully it'll go to some grandkid or... or uh, Nobody seems to be interested in this thing but me. I guess that's because I'm the guy that did the climbing. Okay, why am I talking about a Fuji stick and Mount Fuji? Well, first of all, it's cool. I wanted everybody to see one if you've never seen one. And secondly, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going up another hill, but this time I'm going up in a car or my pickup truck. Uh, it's field day tomorrow. Uh, the uh, Faulkner County Amateur Radio Club will be participating in the American Radio Relay League Field Day. Now, I'm not really certain what that means. I know they're going to go out there and they're going to set up a tent or maybe two. I don't know. Uh, they're going to put up some antennas and uh, they're going to maybe a generator will be fired up for power and a couple of radios will be set up. And that's about all I know about Field Day. So what I'll be doing is driving to what's called the Cadron Settlement Park, which is a couple of miles outside of town here from where I live. Uh, and I will be going up this hill in my pickup truck. I might even take uh, the old Fuji stick with me, I don't know. But I'll get to the top and I will start interviewing and getting into the faces of all the club members and basically asking them, why are you here and what are you doing? You know? <laughs> so we'll all get an education, uh, which is what this entire series is all about. You know, uh, uh, There's lots to learn about ham radio. And, uh, I went out on the internet and looked around at the, the various field day YouTube videos and they tell you nothing. You know, just some guy sitting in a radio, you know, maybe drinking a Coke or smoking a cigarette. And I'm like, well, what good is this video? It doesn't show us anything, doesn't tell us anything. So you will learn what field day is when I get done. So uh, the next time you see me will be Saturday morning. Uh, it'll be bright and early. I have to go to work here in a couple hours. So bright and early for me is really bright and early. You have to crawl out of bed when I'm not used to getting out. But we'll see you tomorrow morning. Oh, it'll be, I believe, around maybe 8 o'clock. Until then, my Fuji stick. Well, it is 8 o'clock, and I am on a hilltop in Cadron Settlement Park. And as you can see, the folks are already here. They've got a little couple of awnings set up here. The day is already hot, and there is... 
uh, I forget what they call those things. <laughs> but uh, they're going to put up this antenna, I assume. And what we need to do is go over here and uh, talk to that fella up here. Okay, we have here the uh, the club president of the Faulkner County Amateur uh, Radio Club, Frankie Parks. And uh, I'm doing this YouTube series on, on ham radio, uh, everything from obtaining your license. You remember that right from the right. beginning when I first came. And now we're out here on what's called field day. And now, are we the only ones doing this? Oh, absolutely not. There are clubs and organizations and just individuals all over the United States and Canada that are putting up stations this morning. Okay, what about overseas, like in Germany or places like uh, that? No, most of this is usually just a U.S. and a Canadian uh, uh, event for the ARRL. The, and, the Amer uh, American Radio Relay League. Right. So do they sponsor this thing? Is this like a yearly event? Yes, every, uh, every fourth uh, weekend in June. So it's once a year. Once a year. And everybody goes out and they pick a spot. Now, do they have to go out in the bush like we are right here? I mean, can they do this? Uh, no, I mean, they, no. Can, can uh, you participate in a field day sitting at home with your own radio, or do you have to go out as a club, as an organization? Uh, you know, I'm not sure what this is all about. I mean, yeah. do you have to belong to a club to do this, or you have to belong to the ARRL, I assume, right? Uh, no, absolutely not. You do not have to be affiliated with the ARRL. Uh, you do not have to go out into the field, although this is uh, quite a bit of what this is about. This is, this is an emergency communications exercise with a contest wrapped around it. So you're coming out here to basically just... Uh, as par as being sponsored by the American Radio Relay League across the United States and Canada, they're doing this to sort of practice what would happen in a real life situation if we were to need ham radio, like um, like catastrophes, Correct. earthquakes, Correct. fires, tornadoes, things like that. That's so right. you're actually here to see if you can do this. Is what you're doing, right? Yeah, that's basically. And it. work out all the kinks and the bugs. Yep. Well, you know, practice makes perfect, and that's what this is about, is we bring all of our equipment out, we set it up, we run it for 24 hours straight, and then we, uh, you know, then we break down after that. And that's just an exercise in being able to get it out, get it up, get it working, and make sure that we can communicate all over the country. Now, you say bring out our equipment. Are you talking about personal equipment or equipment that belongs to the club, or is it a mixture of both? Uh, it's a mixture of both. Uh, okay. The antenna that I'm putting together right now is my personal antenna. What kind of antenna is this? This one is actually a Hustler 6BTV. And it is and, uh, a what kind of antenna? It is a multi-band vertical antenna. It will work uh, 10 meters. 15 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters, and a small portion on 80 meters. Well, how about that? How far do you expect to get out with this thing? Well, uh, the, le the last, this is, uh, uh, last time we had it up, we talked all the way over uh, to Hawaii. Really? With this antenna right with here? this antenna right here. Holy moly. And uh, we talked all over Canada and reached pretty much every state in the United States with it. Now this is strictly HF today, is that right? I mean, there's no VHF, UHF no, today. No, you can, you can work VHF and UHF as well. Now, naturally VHF, UHF is usually not as far reaching. So right. I would say the majority of your stations are going to be on HF, but there are some people that like to work six meters and two meters and two meter sideband. Uh, so they, they do a lot of uh, pretty much every frequency except for 12, 17 and 30 meters uh, are available for us to use today. Okay, so well, you know, different different clubs and different organizations do it differently. Uh, one of the things that we particularly do is we will find a frequency that's open and call CQ and let stations come to us. They will come up and they will contact us and we'll contact them. And then, you know, if that dries up and nobody else is contacting us, we may move around on the band some and find other stations to talk to. You know, it's it's an exercise in communication. So you try to contact as many stations as possible uh, in the 24-hour period. And do you log this in a log or yep. something? Yep. And we, then what happens uh, when you're all done? I mean, uh, someone I remember uh, reading on the internet somewhere where there's a contest, and you mentioned contesting right. involved here. When you're done, do you like turn this log in to the ARL or yes. submit it there? Yes. Okay, and how is that done? It's just like a copy um, is mailed, or you can you can mail a copy. You can file it electronically. That you can go up on their web page.